Hi, I'm Anna Jenkins and I'm a Senior Lecturer in Entrepreneurship and Innovation here at UQ. In this short video on explaining failure, I'm going to draw on some of the key insights we've gained from studying entrepreneurs on the ground over time as they've launched their startups, right from their initial idea through to raising substantial seed rounds, whereas others shutting down. And what I'm going to draw is draw on some of the differences to explain why some of those entrepreneurs went on and were highly successful, whereas others had to shut down. So we're already going to hone in on is why do firms fail? Now, I'm sure you've already heard the common answers to this is because they build products that nobody wants or they don't generate revenue fast enough. But what does this actually look like in practice and is there more to it? So if we start as our starting point that the aim of a startup is to find a repeatable and scalable business model and our business model describes the rationale of how our startup creates, delivers and captures value, we can hone in on this as our starting point to understand how is it that firms maybe fail to create value? What does it look like if they fail to deliver value? And what does it mean if they fail to capture value? Because if we fail at all these different points in the business model, we're not going to have a successful startup. So you've probably also seen this uh, a slide of this format or been introduced to this process where the initial search is around trying to identify a product market fit through a process of customer discovery, customer validation, and iterating until we've got this strong product market fit where we can really demonstrate we've found a product or solution that creates substantial value for a specific target customer before going on and executing on that value proposition. What we're seeing a lot of the times in the startups that are failing in this really early stage in this creation of value is they actually start from a point of customer validation, not a point of customer discovery. And so what we're seeing them actually essentially have a product push as their customer discovery. So rather than starting off with understanding the customer problem and that from the customer perspective, what are the issues they face and where they could potentially try and come in and create value by solving that problem. Instead, they start with their existing product and often it's based on a problem that they've identified from personal experience, but they haven't yet actually gone and really understood is what their personal experience is, is it something that others also have. So they haven't gone in and done a really strong customer discovery process. Instead, they've come up with a prototype, a solution to a problem they face, and it's, they take that existing prototype to the market to test how customers interact and engage with this prototype. The real challenge of this approach of starting our initial customer discovery with the prototype is the prototype is essentially anchoring the feedback that the entrepreneur is getting. So really it's stimming their understanding of the customer problem because instead what they're really doing is checking to see, does my solution work? But they're not actually asking, does my solution create value? So it creates this false sense uh, of achieving this customer discovery, uh, customer validation, this product market fit, because the entrepreneur is coming in merely with this implicit assumption that the problem exists and they're checking whether their solution works. A consequence of this is they don't really hone in and engage in customer discovery sufficiently. Instead, they go through a process of checking their product with the market. Does the product work? Is the solution working? But not, as I said, is the solution creating value? What often then happens is there's lots of iterations of this product that's happening, but not really a stepping back and asking, is the product creating value? So with this continuous investment into the prototype, building it out and creating, the, uh, and creating the product, what often then happens is the startup runs out of money, the entrepreneur runs out of stamina, and we see that the startup ends up failing because here we've seen we've got a product market fit is not achieved, but really this is this illustration of what does it look like when you create a product that nobody wants. It's this in coming in doing the product as customer validation rather than stepping back and doing this initial customer discovery. So really keep this in mind in these early stages. Don't skip customer discovery. A lot of the entrepreneurs we've been interviewing, they just want to get past customer discovery as quickly as possible because they want to get on and building their solution. They want to get on and actually growing and building their startup. So the faster they can get to their solution and their product, the faster it feels like they can build and scale and grow their business. But if they're skipping this really critical step of customer discovery, they're going to have a product nobody wants and end up failing.
So please really keep this in mind. Don't do product push as customer discovery. Instead, really hone in and understand your customer and the problem and then think about how to solve it. Make sure you do this iterative process of customer discovery and customer validation. So essentially we see it in the business model canvas is there's this failure to create product market fit. The next part, if we think about our business model, when we're talking about it, you need to create value, but you also need to be able to deliver on that value. So what we also see is sometimes the entrepreneurs are able to identify how I can create value for a potential customer, but really struggle to deliver on that value proposition. Often it's because they, within their team, lack the technical skills to build the solution. And what ends up happening is tension is diverted away from progressing the startup to trying to find the teammates that they need or raise the capital that's necessary to be able to expand the team to build the solution. Sometimes whilst uh, it's technically feasible to build the solution, it's just not within that founding team. We see this diversion uh, focusing on trying to, how do we get the resources we need to be able to progress? Sometimes though, it's not even technically feasible to build the solution. We've seen this with some of the drone companies that have failed over time. So Xano Drone is an example of this. It's one of the largest failures on Kickstarter from a European based startup where they simply weren't able to get the technology right to be able to deliver on the promise of the drone they created. So also keep this really in mind whilst you're focusing in on trying to create value, engaging in customer discovery. Keep in mind there's also you need to be able to deliver on that value at some point and how do you make sure you build the skill set within yourself, your startup team, to be able to actually deliver on that value. So this is the second place where we see startup struggle is this inability to be able to deliver on the value that they've promised to customers. Essentially it looks like this in our business model canvas is they're not able to perform the activities that are necessary to execute on the value that they've created, and they don't have the resources necessary to do those activities within their founding team. So keep in mind when working on your startup, sort of say, don't be foolish, make sure you're able to deliver on that value that you're creating. The other part where we see startups struggle is this inability to capture value. So they've been identify how they can create value for customers, They've worked out how they can deliver on that value for the customer, but they struggle to work out how they can capture value for themselves as entrepreneurs. So they've been able to build and deliver something people want to use, but not necessarily pay for, we see happening. And sometimes we also see difficulties in building a business model that enables the founders to capture some of the value they're creating. There's such a focus on making sure the customer is getting value, they think about how they capture them val themselves value uh, secondary. And what can also happen is like we see with both the other two uh, places where entrepreneurs can struggle is they run out of stamina uh, to be able to in that process of keep on creating value that's costing them resources for the customer. But eventually, if they don't work out how to capture value for themselves, they also run out of startup funds and stamina to be able to continue. So really keep in mind in the early stages of customer discovery and validation, it's not just about working out how you can create value for customers, but sufficient amount of value that they're willing to pay for it because you don't want to be left in the position of creating value for customers, delivering on that value, but not being able to capture some of that value for yourself. So what did we see that successful entrepreneurs were doing in this startup process? that enabled them to be able to create value for customers and deliver on it and still capture a proportion for themselves. So one of the things that they did really early on is they expanded beyond their existing networks. Often you'll hear, oh, it's better to get a warm introduction, who do you know? That's great for getting your feet wet, testing out your value proposition, but for those that were really able to create that product market fit, they went beyond their existing network and created a stronger test of their value proposition. They did things like looking up who were leaders in industry on LinkedIn and securing meetings with them, going to specific networking events and working out who at that networking event was the most important person to target and talk to. But critically, what it meant is they were able to create a stronger test of their value proposition because they honed in and worked out who is their most their target customer, who is their most potential target customer, and went through customer discovery with them and built relationships with those individuals. 
So what we saw is also by broadening out the network and focusing on doing as much customer discovery as possible. So there was an intensity to the extent and the amount of customer discovery they were doing. They had a much more rapid and faster testing of their value proposition. So in, this, in a much and a shorter amount of time, they were able to engage much faster in this customer discovery, customer validation process. So it wasn't slow and drawn out. Instead, it was rapid and fast and they could iterate really quickly. And they did that by expanding beyond their existing networks. So really importantly, don't wait for warm introductions. Go out there and build the network you need to be able to test your value proposition and execute on it. The other thing that they did was they did the difficult tasks. So they pushed beyond their comfort zone. So often this meant building networks with people they didn't know, engaging in customer discovery, networking with purpose, and really persevering and pushing through in these early stages to do these things that they felt uncomfortable doing. Entrepreneurs that spent time refining their pitch deck uh, and playing with around with different colors potentially on their website, those things were not going to be, they're not the difficult tasks. They weren't pushing themselves out of their comfort zone and it meant that they weren't really progressing their startup forward because they weren't doing the difficult tasks like engaging in customer discovery, pushing themselves further forward. So really keep in mind, it's a really intense process and here where we saw the successful entrepreneurs was they were prepared to do things with intensity and really build out their network to be able to achieve that product market fit faster. That's all for me on this video. Thanks, guys.